So recently I made two videos, um, the baby days and the little years, and today I wanted to talk about the young years, kind of ages five, six, and I have to cap it at eight because that's the oldest child I have. So if you're new to my channel, my name's Alana, and my channel's all about homemaking and marriage, healthy living, and homeschooling, so I'd love for you to subscribe. So in the baby days video, I really encouraged mamas to cherish those baby days because they fly by and you hear so much advice from people to like, um, you know, make them fall asleep by themselves, rush to them, being able to sleep through the night, um, teach them how to soothe themselves, pretty much like Figure out how to live alone, all right? Because I'm not gonna be here for you. And I hate that advice because actually there's no better and more amazing comfort for a baby than their mama. So I wanna encourage mamas to be there for their babies. Is it a life sacrifice? Oh yeah, that's an understatement. But it's what we signed up for, right, as mamas. So we have to live that way, we have to. Um, and if we don't want to, that's a heart battle, you know. Then the other video, the little years, I encouraged mamas to not lose heart in being consistent in training their children, teaching their children, guiding their children through this life, and to be consistent, to stick with it. Um, because those are the years Oh, especially two and three and four, oh my goodness, where you feel like you are just correcting your children all day long. Yes, there's moments of joy. Yes, there's moments of fun. Such great times taking them to things like story time and sitting down and showing them the love of reading and the love of books and playing with shapes and blocks and whatever, making crafts, all those fun, beautiful, wonderful times. But it's just such a crucial, crucial time to teach correct behavior. They must do what you say. They must act the way you are telling them to act. And just sticking with that every single day, day in, day out. And then having consequences when there's deliberate disobedience and deliberate defiance. And um, it's hard. <laughs> It's hard. And now I'm in the younger years, you know, the young years. And it's hard. I don't think it will ever be easy. Now, I am still saying the same things I said when they were two, three, four, and five. And it's like, you guys, haven't we talked about this enough for four years? Like, why are we still doing this or that or this or that, you know? And I talk to mamas of children uh, that are way older than mine and it's exactly what they say happens. It's like it shifts from focusing on you have to do this because I said so. Now, yeah, they have to do this because I said so. But what's my goal? Is my goal to demand the outward obedience of my child not only that, yeah, I want them to do what I said, but more than that, I want them to want to do what I said. I want them to want to obey me and to want to do the right thing. And that, with this age, is not going to be accomplished with just a little swat on the thigh. Um, of course, when they're two, three, and four, and five, you want to be speaking truth into their life and you want to be speaking the word and shepherding their hearts a little bit. They're little. They they need a swat. They need to just do it because I said so. And sure, speak into their hearts. But this age, it shifts over to their heart is the top priority um, because they can reason better. They know exactly. They know exactly what they're doing wrong, why what they're doing is wrong, and they know what they should be doing. And they have to realize that they don't want to do what they should be doing. 
And so that points them to the realization that they're sinful and they need a Lord. They need Jesus. And that is so exhausting, but so wonderful because we don't have like these long drawn out in depth conversations all day, every day. Of course not. But we do have conversations throughout most days and it's because they're still doing the same stuff, you know. Yesterday, one of them, my older one always accidentally hurts the little one. It's like, you know enough to know what's going to happen if you throw that. You know, you're going to hit him eventually by accident. So don't throw that, you know. Or you know what's going to happen if you guys are wrestling standing up on a bed. Somebody's going to fall and it's probably going to be your little brother because you're bigger and stronger. So don't st rustle standing up on the bed, you know, things that are like just, hello, you're big enough to know this, but they still make those bad decisions. So now your brother gets hurt constantly by accident and there's got to be consequences for that, you know, um, but you know, the consequences look so different. There's no way that I'm going to be spanking my eight year old. There just isn't. He's big enough to speak to. He's big enough to sit down and reason with me and really in the end he needs to know what he did wrong why what he did was wrong what he should have done I'm disappointed and he needs to fix it if it's possible and pray that the Lord will gear guide his heart to desiring to do what's right and to make better decisions all day what we talk about is make good decisions and sometimes I'm like is this it? Is this all I'm supposed to be doing is talking to these kids all day long? Because I need some results. I need some like change right now. And then I feel like such a fool because if you look at yourself, right? Us adults, God corrects us constantly, doesn't he? And he corrects us constantly on the same things over and over and over and over and over and over again. And we're older, much, much older. So should I be so shocked and so surprised that my children are messing up in the same ways that they were messing up two years ago? If I'm thinking that there's a formula and if I'm only focused on the outside, sure, I might be shocked. But because I am not only focused on the outside, I'm focused on their heart and I know that there's no formula, I better not be surprised because then what can I say about myself, you know? I am still messing up with impatience or irritability or you name it. And what does God do? Does he scold me, uh, discourage me, throw my sin in my face, rub my sin in my face? No. <laughs> he is slow to anger and so kind and so gentle and so loving and so patient and so gracious and so wonderful. He is the perfect model of a parent and that is the kind of parent that we need to be, that we need to strive to be. And man, it's hard. It is so hard. So hang in there. <laughs> what I do often with my children, especially my older one, my younger one, he's only six. He's still, I'll have like short discussions with him and sometimes I'll still swat him because he outright does the wrong thing. And when I swat him, he doesn't, the goal is not, here's a consequence. That's not the goal. The goal is to bring their hearts back to you. The goal is to bring their heart back to God, right? If you are spanking your child, and they are angry or frustrated or feeling like an injustice has been done to them, I would stop immediately. There is no, nothing being done, productive being done in those hearts. In fact, it's the opposite. You're pushing them away, creating anger, bitterness, feeling like they're being treated unjustly. So, unjustly. So, we don't spank our eight-year-old at all. Um, because he, about a year and a half ago, started to show anger towards it. And so we just stopped. We're like, this is not the goal. The goal is to bring his heart back to the Lord. And so the way to do that with him is just to encourage him in the truth. 
remind him that he's forgiven, relate to him. Sometimes I'll tell him, I know exactly how you feel. I know exactly how you feel. It is so hard. I know. I used to struggle with this or I still struggle with this. Or you've seen mommy, you've seen me get mad and act the wrong way. You know that I still battle sin, but you have to beat it up. You have to beat the sin up. And you can because you have the Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask mommy to help you. Pray. And just encourage them. And so relating to them, encouraging them, and then reminding them that they have been forgiven by the Lord, that they are already forgiven, and that they are loved. And then, of course, if there's something that they've done that is just, you know, that needs punishment in some way, um, I, this is the part that I struggle with. I don't really know what to do. Um, in fact, I haven't really been punishing my eight-year-old um, because, first of all, with all the training that he's had, he doesn't do that those he doesn't do things that need punishment he does foolish things he's not doing sinful things that need punishment like he'll do foolish things like throw something in the neighbor's yard or get on top of the van after I told him not to or and sure somebody might think that's a sin because you told him not to well I told him not to a month ago am I gonna go out there and be like you're just a bang and go crazy on the child no that would be not helpful that's not going to make him you're right mama i am disobeying thank you for pointing me to the truth he's not going to do that what will point him to the truth is if i bring him in and i talk to him about it and remind him when you obey me you're honoring god when you don't obey me you're dishonoring god do you want to honor god well what do you think about this and trust the holy spirit trust the holy spirit's at work in his heart you know and so I've had to like reshape my thinking in the way I used to parent when they were little. It was so easy. It was like, oh, that's wrong. Stop. Don't do that. Do this instead. Moving on. Now it's like, okay, <laughs> we can't do that anymore. You're not, I can't just be focused on the outward behavior anymore. Those years are over. So it's been super hard and confusing at times, but I'm also encouraged to know God's in control, not me. And he is shaping their little hearts. And if I am vulnerable and repentant and loving and kind and gracious and remind them of the grace of Christ, their little hearts are tender. If I am impatient, harsh, bitter, annoyed, loud, mean, their little hearts mirror that. And so what parenting is doing is like showing me you need to exemplify Christ. And then, and then alone will things flow more easily, of course. Like I always say, there is absolutely no, no, no formula. And every father's different, every mother's different, every child is different, so every family is different. So there might be some things that you can relate to from this video, and there might be some things that you absolutely can't. Just like if you told me your story and your circumstances, there would be some I could easily relate to and some that I couldn't. It's just, you know, we all have different struggles and different, different lots of in life um, so that's kind of what I would say about these young years which is not much help because I myself feel lost very often but it keeps me humble and it keeps me running to God because I don't know what in the world you know so I hope this is encouraging in some way to some mamas and I would love to hear any advice from older mamas with older children and any thoughts. Have a great day.